I'm Saturday hauling for you guys today and I'm gonna go ahead and start off with an order that I placed off of the Beautylish website. Wayne Goss released his holiday brush and I kind of wasn't sure if he was gonna come out with one this year because there wasn't like any talk about it and then it just kind of launched. <laughs> so I went ahead and I purchased one of these and it's a fan brush this year. Um, I was really surprised because I did watch his video on it and like off of the Beautylish emails and stuff like that. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be like this big. This is a pretty large brush. I'm going to go ahead and compare it next to a couple Sonia G brushes that I have. Um, how I've been using this so far is just kind of for finishing powder um, and reason being is it's a very super soft very nice well made brush it's got a gold ferrule and then it says Wayne Goss on there very nicely constructed brush but the bristles on this one are quite long they're very soft and it's a little bit more wispy of a brush so if you're looking for more precise application for contouring or blush or highlight or something like that you're going to get a product spread over a larger area with a fan brush that's kind of this large and wispy um i do like it i do have been using it like i said with the guerlain meteorites for all over finishing powder and stuff like that i think that it would make a great kind of all over bronzer brush as well to kind of cover a large area if you're not trying to be too precise um so i'm going to compare it next to the sculpt one and that's from sonia g this is one of my favorite bronzer brushes. Um, for comparisons, the Sonia G has got shorter, denser bristles, so you get a little bit more control with the bristles, whereas the Wayne Goss one is longer and also skinnier, so it's a little bit, like you can see, uh, more uh, wispy than the Sonia G brush right there. And the Sonia G is a pretty large fan brush in itself, so you can just see the size difference between those two brushes. Like I said, this was much larger than I thought it was going to be. And then here it is next to the Sculpt 2 brush, also from Sonia G, which is a smaller brush, which I like to use this for highlighter, precise contouring. It's good for blush. There's a, a lot of uses for this little fan brush here. So that is the Wayne Goss Holiday Brush, and I did see it on the website still in stock as of this morning. And then also from Beautylish, I purchased the By Terry Terribly Donceless Concealer, and I got it in the shade One Fresh Fair. Um, I had purchased this uh, quite a while ago and had since kind of uh, decluttered it. And with this super dry, cold weather that we've been having, my skin is just so, so dry. So I was looking for something that had a little bit more type of skincare ingredients in it. And I remembered this one was real comfortable to wear underneath the eyes. And it does say on here, anti-wrinkle dark circle eye bag serum corrector. So I went ahead and I got it again. Um, the shade Fresh Fair I think it would be a good shade for me in the summertime, but for the winter time, it is a little bit too dark. And then on top of that, this is the concealer that I have on today. It blends out nice. I would call it a light coverage concealer. It's much lighter than a lot of the concealers that are out on the market today. Um, but I had a purchased a Tria laser. It's like a little purple laser that you can use for more specific areas on your face. And I had lasered underneath my eyes last night. And so they're like puffed up. <laughs> they're puffed up right here from lasering them last night. And then I use this concealer concealer today which again it could be a little bit lighter for my skin tone and so I, I really feel like um, my under eye kind of little lines right here are accentuated especially on camera with the darker concealer and then that lasering so I do wish that they had a lighter shade this is the lightest shade that they have because um, I do like the concealer again it is a lighter coverage um, concealer but this is light what I call one fresh fair that's the shade right there so for underneath the eyes, again, I just wish they had a lighter uh, shade than this one right here because, again, it's the lightest one. Um, but I love the finish of it. I love the way that it blends out. I love how it's a, a light type of uh, feel underneath the eyes. And then Barney's is going out of business. I don't know if it's like their freestanding stores or just online or what, but they're having a huge online sale on the Barney's website. So I placed a couple orders there. I started off with just buying one of these Surratt auto graphique eyeliners this is what the box looks like the first shade that i got was poopray 
which is a purple shade. And I knew it was gonna be like a pen style eyeliner, which I typically don't go for those just because I feel like you have to go over it so many times. But I got the purple one and it is a deep, deep purple shade, like a black and purple, which those are my favorite type of colored liners for the upper waterline. It's like a brown that's almost black or a green that is it's so deep. It's like a blackened type of green, but it still, you know, shifts a green. Anyway, I really like the purple shade that was really easy to use and there's quite a bit of fluidity for a pen style liner. So I went ahead and I purchased the brown one and also the blue one. They were sold out of the black, but I'm tempted to buy the black one off of the Beautylish website because they still they sell Syrah on there. So these are the three that I got. I got the purple one called Poupre Indigo Japanese is the blue one and then the brown one I think is just Brune. Um, but these here are very interesting in the fact that they come with a little, I'm unscrewing the deal, they come with a little cartridge which these are refillable uh, pens you can just buy the cartridges and so the eyeliners in there and then you poke it in there and then put the uh, cap back on here and then the other end is a brush tip right there and I like these because while it has a really fine brush tip it's still quite inky um, some of them I do have to make a couple passes but they're one of the better um, pen eyeliners that I've tried and I've tried a lot of pen eyeliners so this one here is the Brune the brown one, which that's one pass. I'll do another pass over it right here so you can see how um, dark it gets. But I'm really impressed with these eyeliners. So there's the brown one. And then he ooh, just bit the dust there. Here is the indigo right here. See, it's like a deep, deep blue shade, like really, really deep blue. So let me go over it again. So there's two passes of the indigo. And I just love how dark they are while still, you know, remaining blue. And then here is the purple shade right here. I can't do it on camera and make my line in the same spot with two passes. <laughs> but there's the purple one. And I really, I really been enjoying these four colors for the upper lash line, how I like to do my wing liner. Um, because I do go over eyeshadow with them, I do have to make a couple passes with them as well though. Also from Barney's, they had the new By Terry Hyaluronic Tinted Hydro Powder and also the pressed one, the CC powder. And I had heard really good things about them, most in particular from uh, Mel Thompson about the loose powder. So it's the By Terry Hyaluronic Tinted Hydro Powder. I got the shade 100 Fair. So it comes in a jar packaging like this, and this is the box on this one. And she was comparing this to how much she loved the old La Mer powder, which I love that powder as well. I actually used up my entire tub of it. Um, I haven't repurchased the newest version, um, but I heard that it's not the same as the first one. But she was saying that she was reaching for this like she was her La Mer. So I thought I'd better give it a try. And also it was with the sale. So um, by Terry products are pretty expensive. I wanted to get the concealer from uh, Barney's as well, but they were sold out of the lightest shade. So anyway, I have used this. I used it over my BB cream, which I mixed the Dr. Jar, the lightest shade and the medium shade. And with this powder setting the BB cream with mixing that medium shade in, it kind of deepens up quite a bit on my skin tone. So that day I had quite a bit more color all over my face than what I would like. So if I use this again, I'm just going to use the Dr. Dart BB cream in the lightest shade only and not mix it with the darker one. And then same with the Bare Minerals foundation and see if that helps lighten it up because this is the shade Fair 100. So it's the lightest one, but it does have some color to it. Um, like there's, you know, there's quite a bit of color to that powder for being fair. And uh, I, I didn't get along with the original Hydra powder uh, very well. It, it just felt really dry on my skin. I didn't get the same feeling from this powder as I did the original. Um, I like this one much more than the original with the exception of the uh, deepening up on my skin tone. <laughs> but um, this is the powder right there. It's very finely milled, very, very silky, smooth and soft. And again, that's the Fair 100 shade. And this does not have like a closer on the sifter or anything like that. And then in the By Terry Brightening CC Powder, I got the shade Immaculate Light. I wanna get the pink one as well, um, but I need to toy around with this one a little bit more. I'm interested to know if all the shades have a little bit of a shimmer in them. This one does. This is the kind of white version. And in trying to brighten up like my under eyes from the puffiness and the deeper, concealer I put a little bit of this on so 
<laughs> it looks a little silly. Like this lighter portion right here, and I tried to blend it out, but there's a shimmer in this powder that's a bit stronger than what I was thinking that it was gonna be. So I'm kind of lighter right here where I was trying to, anyway, it's this whole thing with my under eyes today. <laughs> so I need to toy around with this powder, but again, I was really surprised that there is shimmer in this powder. So this is the Immaculate, Immaculate Light version, and it is the white powder. I am wishing for the pink just because this is it's pretty white and again it's got that shimmer in it so at first like when I first swatched it, I was like oh my gosh is this almost a highlighter for me but um, I had saw yeah Sam Chapman she really loves this powder and then I seen um, doggone what is her name her name is Lydia and she's from the UK but she uses the sun sun something version of this powder as a bronzer and I'm so tempted to get the pink one and the bronzy shade just to see kind of because it seems to me like depending on the shade kind of they're multifunctional for different uses because of how different like the shades are but anyway this one's pretty pretty stark and it does have a shimmer to it it's not like blinding shimmer but it is there so it's not something I'm gonna probably <laughs> I can just see the shine right here it's not something I'm probably gonna use to set underneath my eyes but I'm gonna try it for an all-over kind of uh, finishing powder and see how that goes but it does smell like roses pretty heavily as well so if you're kind of sensitive to that I just want to make mention of it um, the amount of product that you're getting in this powder is 0.35 ounces from Barney's as well, I purchased three of the Ultra Slim High Intensity Lipsticks from Hourglass. I got two of the refills in different shades that I didn't have and then one with the casing on it because I did have those um, holiday cases from the Ghost Collection that I got from Beautylish. So I thought I could, because those are pretty dark shades, not quite wearable, I don't wear them that often. So I got some more wearable shades and I popped them in the Ghost Collection. but. Um, that ghost collection, there was a really pretty nude in there that I've been wearing a lot and it kind of reminded me how nice of a formula this lipstick is. So with, the, especially with the sale, I went ahead and took advantage of that and I got three more shades of the hourglass lipstick here. So this first shade is the one in I Wish and that's what I have on my lips today with some ColourPop uh, lip liners. Uh, this is in the ghost packaging. I have purchased the shade in the refill. So here's I Wish. This is really, really warm nude. It's much more nude than I kind of thought it was going to be. So I did kind of uh, line my lips and fill them in with lip liner and then went over it with the shade so it wasn't just so uh, kind of ghostly looking on my lips. But I think that the shade is pretty with lip liner. Um, again, this formula from Hourglass, this lipstick formula is really pretty. It's it's really opaque and creamy and it stays on the lips really well. It doesn't like slide all over the place and it also goes on really evenly. Um, then I got this shade here, I Lust For, and this is still in the little refill packaging here. So this is I Lust For, and it's kind of a warm nude. And then the last shade that I got is called One Day. And this is a nude as well that has a little bit more pink in it than the other two. Right there, so that one is the shade One Day. And those are the Hourglass lipsticks. None of their Givenchy products were on sale on Barney's and there were so many Givenchy products that I wanted and I was getting all excited and I was like, oh yeah, the Givenchy is not on sale on Barney's. I don't know why that is, but anyway, um, I got a little package from Colored Rain with, and I haven't opened this just because it looks so cute, like it's just the prettiest little gift. Um, and it has two sponges, one's a green and one's a red for Christmas, and then two little corresponding soaps. To go with them and then one of the soap has got a red sticker on it and the other one has a green sticker but like how cute is this for like a little gift and this is from colored rain i haven't obviously i haven't used them yet because i haven't taken them out of the packaging just yet should i take them out i really don't want to like ruin this cute little bow and stuff i almost want to just set it out until after christmas <laughs> it's called candy cane rain and then it's got colored rain in the sponges and there is a flat side you know what i'm just gonna have to take them out aren't i so I can show them to you guys. I took the bow off. Oh my gosh, these sponges are super soft. Really, really soft. I feel like these are softer than a beauty blender. Really, really soft sponge. So this is the red one. Wow, I wish I would have used this today. <laughs> um, here's the green one. Oh my gosh, they're really soft. Okay, anyway, uh, and here's the little soaps. And they kind of look like little candies inside of the tin. I think it's the cutest little like Christmas gift. Big thank you to Colored Rain for sending these over. It's they're super super cute.
Then when I was in CVS a couple days ago, I saw the display for the new Wet n Wild Hello Halo blush lighters and they had three shades and I'm trying to be a little bit better about not buying every single shade in like a display of new like makeup, <laughs> especially drugstore because I'm really prone to doing that and I was just just go with the shade that you can use both the shades with because the other shades are darker they're definitely going to be blushes on me and something tells me I'm going to end up buying them anyway but anyway I just got one for now and it's in the shade highlight bling and this is the highlighter that I have on my face today and it's very very pretty um, I've used the other side right here as a blush and it works on my skin tone um, on a little bit deeper skin tone that would probably work as a highlighter but this here I've worn this quite a few times so far and it's a really pretty shade of highlighter so this one right here again is highlight bling um, from wet and wild maybe some swatches here aren't those pretty I think they're very pretty and I want to say this was five five ninety nine at CVS so that one is the highlight bling right there. And then I had a 20% off coupon at Ulta and I was really eyeing this palette online and then I seen it in the store and it was the last one left so I, I grabbed it. And it's the Urban Decay Party Favor uh, eyeshadow palette. It has six of their Moon Dust eyeshadows in here and each shade is only 0.017 ounces. So rounding up it's 0.02 which is still not a lot of product that you're getting, but there are six shades in here and I've been wearing this quite a bit. I've been using these as all over lid shades and they're really, really pretty. I use them directly over my eyeshadow base, which is um, the Bare Minerals Foundation Stick, which has quite a bit of tack to it, um, which is how I kind of would recommend to use these as over something tacky. And they are so pretty. They don't swatch worth a darn on your finger, but when I take a brush and kind of smush it in there and then pack it over the lid, very, very beautiful. Uh, eyeshadows here. I was really really happy about it so much so that I went back into my collection and I grabbed two of palettes that have the moon dust shadows in there because I had forgotten how pretty these look on the lids. So this is a palette of shades that I had made some time ago so I have them sitting here so that I can use those as well. So here is the packaging. There is a mirror on there. I'm going to try to swatch these but again um, they go on a tacky base much prettier than they're going to show up in a swatch I think. Yeah, they definitely go on over a tacky base better than what they look like right there. But I'm going to swatch them for you guys anyways. And then these bottom three. These do have micro glitters in them as well. So those are the swatches right there. Again, they apply much better than I feel like they look right here, but... That is the Urban Decay Party Favor palette. I've been using it quite a bit as a pairing palette with other palettes and really been enjoying it. Also at Ulta, I bought another one of the Revolution Pro Sculptin Glows. This is the shade Sands of Time. So this is my second one right here. And I bought another one because this is what my first one looks like. There isn't a ton of product per shade. There's only 0 0.07 ounces in each shade. So the pans are relatively thin. It's probably why I went, you know, went through this one so fast. But I have been loving this shade for a bronzer. At first, I thought it was much too peachy to use as a bronzer. And then I did use it as a bronzer. And the undertone of it just works really nice with my complexion. I'm not wearing it today. I'm wearing a different product that I'm going to show you in a minute. But I love this. I love the highlighter as well. It's very reflective. Like I'm starting to see the grid line of the highlighter as well. But I didn't go through the highlighter as fast as I went through the bronzer. So I may see if my mom would like to use this as a highlighter since I bought the other one. Um, but this I was having a hard time getting any product picked up because I've really hit pan on this shade right here for bronzer. And then the highlighter is stunning too. And they've got three different shades available of this at Ulta. Um, this is the lightest one. And it's just really pretty. I want to say it was 10 bucks. This is a bronzer. I just love it. And this highlighter too is stunning. Like I said, it's beautiful. Very reflective with no like noticeable chunks of glitter or anything like that in it. So that is the Makeup Revolution uh, Sculpting Glow Sands of Time. 
that I had to have another one of. And then the bronzer that I'm wearing today is a new product from Urban Decay. They sent me over a nice little PR package with, with a shade of foundation and concealer, which I already had the concealer shade, so I gave one to my mom so that she could try it to see if she liked it. And then um, a new pressed powder, which I haven't had a chance to use just yet, but this I wore today. So this is the Stay Naked Threesome, up to 14 hour wear bronzer, highlighter, and blush. And the shade, um, I remember they sent over like a little thing where you could pick out kind of your tones. That's how they were able to customize the shades, which I think is super helpful instead of sending like over a whole range of, like, especially concealers and foundations and powder shades that, you know, I can't use. <laughs> so the shade I chose was Rise, and I want to say that there's three of these available. And this reminds me of the Naked uh, Flushed Bronzer Highlighter Blush in Streak, which I'll compare the two so you guys can see uh, the differences between them. But here's the packaging. I think the new packaging is really pretty. Um, there's a total of bronzers 0.14 ounces, highlighter is 0 0.09, and blush is 0 0.08 ounces. And so I have got this on my face today for both blush and bronzer. And I swirled my brush in the bronzer and hit a little bit of the highlighter. And then when I use the blush, I swirled my brush in there and hit a little bit of the highlighter. That's kind of how I used it because the highlighter is just a little bit too deep for what I like on the top of my cheekbones. And I think it worked out perfectly. This blush is such a pretty like punchy shade of tangerine that I think is so pretty. So I've got this on for blush and bronzer on my face today and then that wet and wild highlighter and I think that it just looks really pretty. When I went to use this blush, I was just surprised of how like how punchy it looks on the cheeks. It's really, really pretty. So let's swatch the bronzer and the highlighter and the blush. And I like the tone of that bronzer too. And I did see these on Ulta as um, coming soon, so they should be available soon. But that is the one in Rise right there. And then I'm going to show it next to Streak, which I was like, that really looks like Streak. But Streak isn't as... Uh, vivid in terms of the blush shade and the bronzer is lighter. So here is the older kind of uh, version and packaging in Streak and then the bottom is the new one in Rise. The highlighters kind of look similar though. And a huge thank you to Urban Decay for sending that over. I will keep you guys posted on the powder. And then House Laboratories came out with some new products, so I picked up two of them. I was hesitant, but I really wanted to give the brand another shot because I wasn't that crazy about the first products that I got from the brand. Um, so I purchased this Risqué Brow and Lash Sparkle Topper. And I didn't know exactly what to expect, but I have um, in the past purchased like glitter mascaras to run through my brows as kind of a glitter brow gel. And I really like that effect, especially around the holidays. So I thought I'd give this a try, but this is um, tinted black. And I'm like, this is not gonna be universal, you know, for people unless you have really dark eyebrows. <laughs> um, and I did use it yesterday lightly over my brows and I was able to make it work, but it did noticeably darken them. Um, I don't have it in my brows today, but I want to show it to you guys. Again, I like the packaging. It's kind of like their her eye glazes or whatever. But um, I haven't used it as a lash topper either uh, just yet. But here's the applicator. And then, see, it's black. <laughs> it's like, dude. Even, I know quite a few people who have really dark hair that don't, you know, opt for a, a black brow gel. You know what I mean? because um, it's just so harsh. So with a super light hand, I can get away with just a few sparkles in my brows, but it's definitely not ideal. Um, so there's that. It had a decent amount of hold. And again, the sparkles aren't that, if you can even see there, the sparkles aren't that noticeable. Like I didn't see them real vividly like I have with some um, glitter mascaras that I've run through my brows. They're just much more vivid. Um, this one isn't that vivid. <laughs> then I also couldn't help myself. I had to try the eyeshadow palette that she came out with. So this is the Glam Room Number no. 1 eyeshadow palette. That's what it says on the packaging here. I'm trying to look to see how much product. Okay, it says on the back. Uh, total net weight, net weight? Total net weight is 14.2 grams or 0.5 ounces of product. So there are 10 shades in here. The packaging, it has a nice weight to it, but it's it, it's quite 
plasticky feeling, if you will. And then inside there is a mirror and then here are your shadows. And then this lid is beveled or like it's raises into kind of a pyramid on top right there, much like all of her packaging. So this house labs and then here are the shades on the back. You've got four matte eyeshadows in here. You've got a dark uh, black shade, a kind of dark brown mid-tone and a light kind of brow bone, which works for me. And then these shades right here are shimmer shades. Um, now I've used this palette and I'm able to get a nice look out of it, but when I use this, it makes me think of old school um, Maybelline eyeshadow quads that came in the little squares. I, I know there was like a term for them, but this doesn't feel to me super luxe or something like, I don't know how to kind of explain it. Like when I think of Lady Gaga, I think of super luxe, super rich, super intense, very vibrant. Do you know what I mean? Like um, special, cause I feel like she's special and everything she does is really unique, you know, and there's just nothing very unique about this formula or these shadows, like not a shade in here feels special if that makes any sense i'm gonna swatch them for you guys i did use them again the looks turned out just very kind of plain looking just like i had some you know eyeshadow on uh the shimmers weren't super shimmery they were almost like satin shimmer and the mattes they blended and had pigment and stuff like that but they're i mean i hate to say it like this but it's kind of boring so let me go ahead and give you guys some swatches and hopefully you can see um for yourself whether or not it's something um you would like but um, again, even the color story, uh, nothing, you know, revolutionary in terms of the shades that were picked. Um, again, I just think of Lady Gaga so much differently than what I see in her makeup, you know what I mean? So there's the first four. And then these next ones. Right there. And then the last two. That is a pretty black black, I will say that though. Pretty, very smooth as well. I haven't used the black shade in this palette. I used the other three mattes, but not that black. So, you know, they swatch pretty good. Um, I, I just, when I use them, I just didn't think of anything special. Like, I really want her stuff to be special, <laughs> you know. Anyway, that is the House Laboratories Glam Room um, number one eyeshadow palette right there. And then I broke down and placed an order with my friend Toshia, who has an Instagram account, uh, Food Japan. He um, purchases and sells a lot of like high-end Japanese makeup brands. He, he's able to get a lot of that exclusive stuff that we don't have access to here in the States. And I hadn't purchased for a while from him. And I seen this, and I just couldn't not get it. Like, it, and it's my first Lauderay purchase. It's the Lauderay Rose, our limited edition Rose Lauderay cheek color. And there's 0.17 ounces of product in the cheek color. But this is the box that it comes in. <laughs> just You just wait here till I show you the container. <laughs> this is what you put the uh, petals or the blush in right here. It is a porcelain swan. It's much larger than I thought it was going to be. What should I hold it up to so you guys can see in comparison a little bit better? Here's this concealer. It's, it's a lot larger than I thought that it was going to be. But anyway... It's a little porcelain swan, and these did come packaged individually, like so you set the powders inside, and then there is blush inside of here. So you swirl your blush over the petals, or your brush over the petals to get the blush on. And initially I thought that these were made solely out of powder, and then I couldn't help myself. I was like, I'm gonna grab one and see if it breaks off just to find out, but they are kind of fabric fabric roses that have the powder over the over the top of them which i was really hoping for solid powder but they're not solid powder but that's okay because this is still super pretty and this actually comes out i don't know if they'll do refills for this or not but you set this inside of here which i like because this plastic makes the porcelain glass not touch but look at this you guys oh my god this is officially i think it might be one of the prettiest things in my whole room and again, this is my very first purchase from Lauderay, and there's a little felt bottom on there so that it, you know, you set it down and it's nice and soft. 
it says Les, I'm going to butcher this, Les Merveilleuses Laudere <laughs> on here. How beautiful, how beautiful. I had to have this, I just had to. In addition to that, I also had to have this, which is also Les Merveilleuses, <laughs> I know I butchered that one, uh, Laudere Paris Silky Pressed Powder. Again, with the swan on there, this is the packaging. Again, I don't know if I'll be able to use this and like destroy the the like embossing inside of the powder. There's 0.35 ounces of product in here. This is the case right there. This is not a sticker. It's like on the actual packaging. And then here's the powder. Oh my gosh, I really think this would be a pretty under eye setting powder. It doesn't appear to have any shimmer in it, but can you guys see the swan? It's so pretty. It's just so, so pretty. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna leave Toshia's Instagram down below if you guys are interested in getting like some of these more like limited products that we just like, again, we can't get in the States. I, I love shopping his Instagram page like that and I hadn't purchased from him for a while and then I seen these and I just had to have them. And it was crazy because I ordered these maybe a week ago and they were here so fast. I got them two days ago, all the way from Japan. You know what else is like, oh my gosh, okay. So I placed an order with Cleona Cosmetics for a lot of their eyeshadows on November 1st. And I knew it was gonna take a long time for them to get here. And I have been waiting and waiting. Then I finally got a shipping notification and it said they were gonna be here on the 16th. And they made it to Bismarck. And then next up would be my post office. And they haven't made it to my post office in four days. And now they're just not being tracked. And I'm just like, desperate. <laughs> I'm desperate to get them and I if they're lost in the mail I'm just gonna I'm gonna be devastated because they're hand pressed shadows and the company takes a while to ship to begin with so again I place that order on November 1st anyway moving on <laughs> I purchased both of the new NARS afterglow palettes I got the oh no wait it's the afterglow eyeshadow palette and the overlust cheek palette the packaging I love what NARS is doing with their packaging they're finally getting away from you know that all the time black rubbery packaging and they're kind of turning it you know make spicing it up a bit which I appreciate so this is the afterglow eyeshadow palette this is the eyeshadow palette that I have on my eyes today I did take a little bit of a really shimmery highlighter to put in the inner corner right there other than that this is what I have on my eyes and this is a really nice palette there are 12 shades that are 0.04 ounces a piece and there aren't any like funny shades there's no press glitters there's no you know funkiness or nothing every shade in here I feel like is really really nice so um this is what the packaging looks like it's very textured and also has like um like some rollingness to the top of the cover and it's orange and then here are your shadows you have got uh, solidly you've got four mattes which are these two and then these two right here this one has got a satin to it it kind of appears matte initially and then you've got four of those really shiny shades and then these three shades down on the bottom are kind of uh, slight that they're smoother like shimmer metallic type shades but really impressed with this palette I like it a lot which I wasn't quite sure what to expect but I just feel like it's very very usable all the shades are very usable and very wearable and it's just very pretty and I feel I really feel like both of these palettes are screaming summer we got a ways to go for that don't we <laughs> so there's the first four shades right there and we'll do these guys. That brown up in the corner right there, that is the darkest shade in the palette. So, just wanted to make mention of that. Oh. And these went on really well. They blended really well. I had very little fallout. I was just really impressed with this, this eyeshadow palette. Super happy about it. I think, yeah, yeah, I did. Did I or didn't I? I thought I used with, oh, the cheek palette, I used that $25 off a 75 purchase at Sephora. So I got a little bit of a sale on it, but. Pretty, right? Like it's warm, but I, there's quite a few like oranges, like burnt kind of oranges in there. So right to there. And again, that is the new NARS Afterglow eyeshadow palette right there. And then I also got the Overlust Cheek Palette. And one of the things that really drew me to this palette, it looked very summer-like. And also, there aren't any 
old shades in here. It said in the description, all new shades. So I was like, I'm gonna try it out. <laughs> so I went ahead and I got it. Um, there's supposed to be three highlighters in here and three blushes. All the highlighters for my particular li liking, unless I'm quite, quite tan, are too dark for me. But since it's in a palette form, these shades down on the bottom are more like satin. Uh, finishes this one's all yeah I would just call them satins actually um I can dip into those highlight shades to give them some shimmer I mean it just looks very very summer -y. I keep wanting to saying I keep wanting to say summerly <laughs> but it looks very summer like they're all like medium tone shades there's nothing super light in here and there's nothing very dark but let's give you some swatches these here have a very interesting texture they're not baked gelée. They are powder, but they feel very, very silky. Like that's how finely milled they feel. Like it's, they're very, very smooth feeling. So again, all too, oh, whoa, forgot to, well, at least you can see what they'll look like with the eyeshadow right there. So those are the highlight shades right there. And I'm going to, again, mix them with the blushes. And then here are the blush shades. Very kind of muted, wearable kind of shades. Pinky one, an orangey one, and a more neutrally bronze one. So there's the shades in the face palette. And then again, there's the eyeshadow palette right there, but... And then here's the palette again. This is what the top looks like. This one's got a pink type of cover again with the kind of texture to it. And then here's the back for the shades. I did purchase both of the new Melt palettes as well. Um, I can't remember the name of the collection off the top of my head, but the ones with the sugar skulls on them, they're beautiful. I haven't used them yet. <laughs> so I, I want to be able to give you guys an opinion on these shadows. Um, I cannot, oh my gosh, I went down to Deadwood this past weekend and I took it along with, that's the only eyeshadow palette that I took with me, is that uh, Pat McGrath Divine Rose palette. I'm obsessed with it. I can't stop using it. I, I'm obsessed with it. I really hope that she comes back out with it because I feel like a lot of people would love that. But because I can't stop using that, I haven't used some of the newer palettes that I've purchased. And I need to just put that down and do that. Like I had the NARS palette for days before I used it. <laughs> anyway, um, so I haven't used those yet, but I have used this. I got one of their new gel liners and it's in the shade Fortuna. It looked like a really deepened green, which I'm always looking for a really deep forest green that I can use on the upper lash line. Um, I've used their liquid lipstick in the green shade it came out with a collection of some sort i can't remember off the i think it was the smoke sessions one yeah and i use that for liner and it's beautiful but i have to set that with a powder otherwise it um it like doesn't fully set on my eyes and i feel like this color fortuna is similar to that um but with this liner i had to go over it quite a few times to get it opaque and then on top of that it was by I would say six or seven hours later, uh, because I had to you know, layer it so much to get the opacity, it was starting to lift off in flakes. And I was like, son of a gun. <laughs> um, because I love these tone of uh, eyeliners. Even like with the Surratt, I wish so bad that um, Essence would make colored eyeliners in their super precise eyeliner range. This is one of my all time favorite liquid liners. It has a brush tip applicator that you dip into the well. This is also my favorite application method of eyeliner, but this only comes in one shade in black and I'm constantly looking for deep colored shades. Gel liners, I usually have to mix with Duraline to get them creamy and I don't like to drag a brush across my my upper lash line I like it to be really fluid and I love the tones of those Surratt ones that I just showed you guys but I do have to again go over those a little bit but they're one of the better ones that I found especially in terms of a pen eyeliner but anyway this is the Melt Fortuna Ultra Matte Gel Eyeliner and see how deep it's green but it's so deep and I love that type of color for the upper lash line and again I had to layer it because it doesn't it shears out upon, you know, your first swipe. And then again, it started to lift off and peel. So I just think the color of that is absolutely stunning. I'll definitely be toying around with it a little bit more, but um, yeah, that's Fortuna right there. And this is the packaging. Oh my gosh, the packaging on this stuff, so pretty. 
this is what it came in. That whole collection is absolutely stunning, but I just got the palettes and this uh, gel liner. And then lastly here, I wanted to show you this collection that ColourPop sent over. It's called Oh, We're Glowing For It. It says, take your glow to the next level in two steps. And what I'm hoping for is that they come out with more kind of curated shade ranges because there's only this shade in the products that they came out with. And for the highlighter, both the liquid and the press, they're both too dark for my skin tone. So I hope that they come out with both lighter and darker versions of this because I think the products are quite pretty. So this first one is the ColourPop Liquid Highlighter. And is there a shade on here? Champagne Bubbles is what it's called. And this does have a dry down, but I don't feel like it's a constricting dry down, if that makes any sense. So it comes in this type of uh, packaging right here with the little thing like this that pulls up the product into the dropper. So let's do a drop. Do, do a drop. But here's a swatch of it. Um, the other thing that I thought I could try this out with is put a couple drops of this into my uh, BB cream to add a little bit more of a glow to it, which I might try that tomorrow actually. But that is the liquid highlighter in Champagne Bubbles. I would love to see this in multiple different shades and also like maybe some funner colors with different like dual chromes maybe? That would be fun, right? That's Champagne Bubbles. And then they also have the ColourPop Pressed Illuminator. There's 0.3 ounces of product in here. This is also called uh, Champagne Bubbles. And this with these compacts, because I bought one of the body, the Soul version body highlighters, which is kind of a um, super shock formula. That's how I felt about that one. This one is different. This one feels more pressed powdery, but still a little bit creamy. Um, the packaging on these, it's a, because the lip don't stick out enough, I find it a little hard to get the packaging open on these. Not a little hard, kind of a lot. <laughs> Just because there's nothing to grab onto on this bottom part, but this is the Champagne Bubbles Pressed Illuminator. Again, I need to see a lighter color in this because I, this is too dark for me. <laughs> um, the texture of this is quite um, thick feeling, so when you put it on the skin, I definitely buff it out. I haven't put it on my cheekbones again because it's just too dark for me, but it's got a thicker type of a texture to it. You can definitely feel that there are some silicones in there. So let's swatch this guy right here. It's got a really pretty golden sheen to it. So that one is the Champagne Bubbles uh, Pressed Highlighter. From that same collection, they also came out with two brushes, and this is available right now as well. They came out with a F24 Medium Fluff Brush and an F23 Flat Kabuki Brush, and these are my first brushes from ColourPop, and they feel really nice. They're really soft, synthetic brushes, and they feel so nice that I kind of wish that I would have bought that uh, big brush set that they came out with during Black Friday. There was, I think, 30 brushes in there, but they have a nice weight to them. They just feel really nice. And these ones in particular with the gold, like the kind of rose gold handle and the gold ferrule with the nude bristles, they just look, they look really pretty. They're very visually pleasing to look at. So again, synthetic, super soft synthetic brushes. This one right here would be good for like foundation and stuff like that. I think it'd be, was meant to be used with that liquid highlighter, but these brushes are really nice. I didn't know what to expect from ColourPop brushes, but pretty good. So big thank you to ColourPop for sending over that collection. Would love to see it expanded in terms of shade range. And that's everything for my haul today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I'll see you guys later. Bye.